Hello, hello. And welcome to an incredibly dumb little April Fool's map, CTM Abridged by me. Yes, the CDM C Discord is doing a funny little April Fool's thing. Right, instead of complete the monument, we are across the moat. A little bit like last year, where we became Chicken Tiki Masala Discord for a day. So, yes. When I found out that we were going to do this, I decided to make a little bridge-related map. So here we are. <laughs> a bridge-related map. Uh, yeah. Map is basically existent for the joke, but also to test out a few item buildery things that I had already made, which I intend to use in a map which I am still very slowly working on. Uh, Depths of Duality 2. Still not sure if that's going to be the real name or not. But yes. The mobs were very rushed together. The bridge is rather rushed together. I didn't even boot up the map making multiplayer server or whatever. I just used Amulet to do a little bit of copy pasting and that was it. So, yes, the map took about four hours to make, but all the items had been made ahead of time and I intend to use them again. Maybe with a few balance tweaks or wording changes, but the map is a meme. <laughs> the mobs are a bit of a meme, the items are very much not a meme, so... There's that! Rules! Use at least easy difficulty, never peaceful, as per usual I will be using normal. And do not use any mods, do not cheat, have fun. Fairly basic rules, because leave the map boundaries, there aren't any. It's a super flat lava world, the lava goes on forever. Religious trading, that's not a thing that's gonna happen. Again, anvils enchanting, enchanting tables, so on and so forth, that's all things that are impossible. We need the red wall. Uh, thank you to Zangriware for making item builder. It is an incredibly useful tool. We have a mending sword, we have a mending pick, we have some food, we have some torches, and we have a tiny bit of armor here. Uh, right. Let's just start things. That is a reason why this guy has so much leather armor. You'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, what else, what else, what else? Is there anything else to explain right off the bat? I keep thinking of something and then forgetting it again. Right, I haven't actually played this version of the map. I did a playtest. And then made a couple of tweaks based on that. And then didn't play the tweaked version. Tweaks I made, I just added an item. I fixed the skeletons, because originally none of them had bows, which is very terrible. Especially because there's an item that relies on them having bows, which again, we'll get to a little bit later. And also, I found out for the zillionth time that Vex is an annoying mob. So I deleted them all. And there are some commander blocks which go, as if a Vex exists, replace it with a skeleton. That kind of thing should really be a function file, but that's the only command related thing that exists in the map, so it's actually just a double command block chain hidden in that pillar down there. So hopefully that means I don't die quite as much to vexes this time. But it's impossible. We do have a death counter, by the way. It is in the tab. I did set that one up for you. Get some better weapons soon. Breaking one leather tunic. These are now unprimed. Didn't really intend for this to be 
uh, one to three player map when I began, but then I started put, putting three of everything in chests, and it just kind of happened. We have our first item buildery thing. Unbreaking five. 0.5 armor plus 5% speed. When equipped, movement speed while not sprinting is increased by an additional 25%. This basically makes it so that your movement speed while walking around is basically the same as your movement speed while sprinting. I am now sprinting. I am now not sprinting. It's pretty much just as quick. So it doesn't really give you much of a practical speed boost, because it's just as fast as it would be if you were sprinting. But sprinting uses more hunger. So this is really just a... it doesn't use quite as much food while moving around. Provided you remember to not sprint. <laughs> Chest plate. Uh, shoes, even. You have an offhand, just for the sake of having an offhand that isn't a shield. Got a couple of holes in the bridge. Sprinting again, which is pointless. Whether or not these boots are really better than ordinary leather shoes, I couldn't really say. They've got a little bit less armor, a little bit more speed just generally, 5%. I think they're slightly better than leather boots, but not by much, to be honest. And food isn't a concern in this map. At least it shouldn't be, unless you die a whole bunch to lava. Right. There's also a few things in this map which affect multiple people. Which isn't going to help me here, but these are just what the items had on them anyway in my spreadsheet, because they're intended for Depths of Duality 2, which is going to have two people, so this kind of thing is going to be very helpful for that kind of thing. Efficiency 2, when breaking 1, when breaking a spawn of the wielder and all of the players within 15 blocks, gain 3 seconds of regeneration too. It's basically Sapper from Cartographer, but it also does an area effect instead of just being the person who broke the spawner. So it's a slightly better version of regular old Sapper from Cartographer 2. We have a couple of instant health potions. Again, there's a reason why these are not splash. Blazes have reduced health. These husks also have reduced health. There's a reason why pretty much every mob is the way that it is. And that's so that it can interact well with a specific item. Like, there's a reason there are low health zombies. Not really a reason why the blazes have low health, besides the fact they're just easier to fight. Uh, sure, let's take a stern sword and one of these as well. Adaptive leggings, plus three armor, plus one knockback resistance. Brace! I've kind of written this like a custom modded Slay the Spire card, which is not good. <laughs> and as was pointed out to me, there's probably a way to word this nicer. When attacked, prime this for three seconds. Well primed, gain plus two armor. Basically, when you're attacked for the next three seconds, you get plus five armor instead of plus three. So... I think these have slightly less armor than... yeah, your default chainmail leggings have four, these have three, but if you get hit for the next few seconds, it's better, and they have five instead of three. So again, a bit of a side grady thing, where it depends if you think you're going to be taking several hits in succession. 
And in that case, it is better. And then you've also got the knockback resist thrown on there as well. It further differentiate them from the default ones. Prime is a item builder thing, which is how the effect actually works, where you can prime an item and then have it do other things while it's primed, and then have it unprime automatically after a certain period of time. So when something hits you, it goes into the primed state, and then while in the primed state, it does something else, which is it gives you plus two armor. Does the player need to know all this? Not really. Here's something that should be fun, but I didn't have a chance to play around with when I was actually playtesting, because the skeletons in my playtest didn't have bows, but now they do have bows, and this is a thing that is kind of like the shield that deals with bow-wielding skeletons while not being a shield or an offhand item at all. Bow-wielding skeletons hit with arrows from this bow lose their bows and are momentarily stunned. Can you have multiple triggers for Prime with this one? Multiple! So if I do this... Bow Skeleton be gone. And by momentarily stunned, it has been very momentarily. Should be two seconds of slowness 10, I think. Of course, this bow does also just work as an ordinary bow. And you're bowless, and you're bowless. This is one of the uh, one of the items I am most proud of. I think it could potentially be very fun to mess around with. And the power one also gets rid of the blazes instantly. We have a few things in here. We have choice. We have a choice. We have a chest plate version of these leggings. It has brace, we know what that does. We also have an offhand here as well. When an offhand, the wielder and all of the players within 30 blocks of them. Again, these things were made for a map that has two players. Gain plus one armor and plus one armor toughness. It's basically your armor offhand, but it also affects other players nearby. If you were in a big group and you had several of these, that would be very good, because that would stack. But, uh, we don't currently. When you drink a potion, gain 10 seconds of speed 1 and strength 1 in addition to the potion's usual effects. This is why these are not splash potions. Because I could put this on, I could drink this potion. I get a little bit of speed, a little bit of strength. I think I might end up buffing that, if it's ever used in another map, which it probably will be. Uh, this is also, fun bit of trivia, this is the only item that I did not have on my spreadsheet already. This is the only item that I made specifically for this map. The idea was already in my head, it was going to go on the spreadsheet eventually, but it was not there before I started working on the map, so there you go. But do I want that? Or do I want... Thorns 1 Mending, plus 2 Armor, which is much lower. But while equipped, wooden weapons deal plus 2 attack damage, and have a 20% chance to lose no durability on use. This effectively turns wooden things into not quite as durable as iron, but the same attack damage as iron. And a fair bit more durable as well. Please, I think I will go with that one. I think that is better than this one. So, uh, this one would be fun to play around with as well. 
E. I think when that gets used again, the duration of those will be upped. We also have a nice wooden sword to synergize with our plus two, so this now does suits attack damage, smite one, sweeping edge two, and breaking two, when killing a zombie, all other zombies within 20 blocks are inflicted with five seconds of wither two. As it says, it is designed for de-hoarding large groups of zombies. Like this large group of zombies that we have conveniently right here. almost like this sword was put here, specifically to deal with this exact situation. This guy is going to take a lot of hits. There is a way to deal with this, but I don't have it yet. Okay, knock you off the ledge. Would be excellent, yes, thank you. Yeah, in uh, repeatedly mentioned full map, this is going to be one for a jungly area. We have some more of the spread snapper pick. We also have spinning drill spin up when breaking a spawner, the wielder gains three seconds of haste ten. Breaking spawners does not cost this pick any durability, so do not be fooled by that lower durability. That is only if you're breaking random blocks. Breaking spawners costs nothing. Uh, and just to counteract how good that effect is, it also has minus 50% max health. So you can't just run around the place breaking spawners willy-nilly and not expecting to get punished when you get hit by something. I can hopefully demo this for you. Best one's slow to break, but then kaboom. Buy that chest. Right. <laughs> more things. More things. Test all of the things. We have more funny bows. We have power one and breaking one. Plus five percent speed. Drawing this bow has less impact and movement speed. Basically means while you're drawing it, you get a speed boost, which is. Uh, not sure if this one's really usable for a full map, because the screen does wonky things needing to get that speed boost. But yeah, I have my bow drawn back, and I'm not getting nearly as much movement penalty. Yeah, map is basically a tech demo. You're right. And then we also have the probably even more fun one. Flame! Remote detonator, creepers hit with arrows from this boat instantly explode. Never really understood why this... well, I do, because balance. But it makes no sense why flame weapons do not activate creepers. So now they do. Whoops, went right through it. Now, it doesn't actually make the creeper explode. It just spawns an exploding creeper uh, at their location. But same difference, really. Right. There's that. Here's our little checkpoint. In a bed. Uh, give me the brace helmet. Yeah, give me the brace shoes. Potion, potion. Ditch some of this older junk. Let's 
chest is just more basic supplies in case you die and you respawn here and you need more basic supplies. There you go. I do need to restock on torches. There's also more coal and wood here in case you need to do the same. Tip time! Your iron armor on those melee skeletons is very protective. To be precise, it has five armor on each piece of armor. Prop 2 and projectile protection 1. Instead of attacking directly, consider using smashing axes. <coughs> or knocking them off of the bridge. Yes, it's the good old don't fight them directly, knock them off the bridge mobs. But there's a second way to deal with them. Shattering. Attacks have a chance to strip struck mobs of their armor and equipment. Let's see that one in action, shall we? There go your leggings and your offhand. There goes your main hand. Didn't have them with enough hands. Leggings again. Helmet. Chest plate. Why does it keep going for the leggings first? Oh, that got rid of absolutely everything. Die. Uh, I think they can. I think. Not certain. I haven't actually tried. They probably could. I wouldn't want them to actually do that. <laughs> it seems uh, bad. But anyway, the exact chances for those curious. I did not put it in the description because that would make it unwieldy long. But there's a 25% chance for each piece of armor to be stripped off independently from one another. And then main hand and off hand, I think, are a little bit more impactful than a single piece of armor. The chances of those being removed is slightly lower at 20%. Not sure why I'm using the uh, flame bow against the mobs that do not take fire damage. <laughs> this is actually a weird thing that I've noticed in another map recently as well. Uh, commenter, Hitman in the chat, is that it doesn't actually go down right away. It goes down when you get hit by something. It'll then get rid of all those hearts, and well, I can probably demonstrate by jumping off of this random uh, platform, can't I? Bam. Uh, yes, there it goes. Now we're at 50% health. Uh, the way the hearts render is just a, a bit strange. And I might change this pick to make it minus armor instead in the future. Because, yeah, the health thing is weird. Might find some other way of debuffing that that isn't with that. As you can see as well. I broke one coal earlier, so it's not at 31, but we're still at 30 from breaking all of these spawners. What I originally wanted to happen was it consumed a durability for the first spawner you broke, and then while the effect was active and you had haste 10, it wouldn't consume any durability. But I couldn't get that to work for some reason. It feels like logically I should have made it work. Uh, I had it so that I, I think it should have worked. But it didn't, for whatever reason. I do not have my disarming bow. Where did that go? Where did I put it? It's gonna be in here. Gimme that.
Little bolus. I won't work on that because that's not a bow. Let's get over here. Right, I definitely want that too. You and you and dodge things. You, you, and they're all broken. Got him. Have a very powerful offhand in here. When in the offhand, the Wilder, and all players within 20 blocks. Can you tell all these items are designed for having more than one person yet? When in the offhand, the Wilder, and all players within 20 blocks, get an absorption one shield which refreshes every 30 seconds. Might have to wait for the first instance of that to come out. It is a global clock. And here we have the... The inverse variant of the brace armor. The buckle armor. Sits armor! There's the absorption. Sits armor, plus 5% speed, plus 5% attack speed. When attacked, prime this for 5 seconds while well primed. Minus 2 armor, which takes it down to a plus 4. Which is still very good, obviously. But not quite as good as your basic golden chest plate. And we're still gaining armor overall because we got the shoes and the helmet. Which are countering all that. In fact, we have everything else which is countering all that. I think I want my wooden attacks to do more damage anyway. Got him. Uh, this is the disarming bow. Not that it matters too much for the low health blazes. Got him. Some efficiency one stone picks if you don't like the spin up so much, but I'll keep what I have. Yes. I think it might be something to do with the speed that I'm breaking them at as well. Well, maybe not. I don't know. But I can tell you that that is a common bug. I don't know why it happens sometimes and not others. Yet, armor broken. Really have gotten it with the creeper killing bow, that would have been more fun, but never mind. Gotcha. Got this one right, yep. Yep. Again, first play test, that was just another stone sword with stuff on it, but now it is an iron shattering axe. A 
nothing else particularly interesting about it, it's just an iron version of the previous axe. I also made a diamond version, but it's not in this map. And you, and... Should just have the other bow on the bar. Uh, I don't want it to blow up the chest, though. Now it's dead already. Break! Break! Unexpectedly high HP spider. Uh, do I want this other buckle armor? Might as well, just to use something different. The absorption back again. See, we're now on Sit's armor. It's scaling back up again. Yeah, we really don't have that much armor. It's the chest plate. I think that skeleton's already de-armed. Sure, you do that. Of course, the shattering axe does have a chance to knock both skeletons. Well, that was lucky. Does have a chance to knock both skeletons' bows off as well. You! You were annoying in the plate test because you spawned vexes. Now you will not, and uh, hopefully much less annoying. About to find out. I think it's the first time we found this sword as well. I'm breaking three, stone sword. When a mob is killed with this weapon, all of the mobs within 20 blocks that have less than 5 HP, or 5 HP, instantly die. And we also have instant health 2 potions. Um, sure. Let's struggle with that. Well, I left the command block output on. That is brilliant. Well done, me. That's a lot of skeletons all of a sudden. That's a lot of skeletons all of a sudden. And the pick destroyed all of my health. Well, uh, goodbye. There we go. More spin drills, more energy extractors. Just wanted to make sure the player had enough picks. Not sure how I thought they'd run out, considering the spin drills don't break. idea how the armor guy got aggroed on the uh, Voka there. Well, I'll take it. Really? There we go. A couple of unlucky hits. Do, 
no shield to block with. I'm gonna just hang back, dodge and shoot. Does it become an entirely new mob without the bow? Just remove the bow. Uh, I don't know exactly how the item build of works, but I think... Yep, I am. Well, it's just gonna remove the bow, isn't it? I can, I can guarantee that, because the armor mobs do not reset all of their health when you break their armor, so... It is gonna be just remove item from inventory slot. Just remove bow. Get it out of there. Maybe. You, I do not have the right bow on my bar. Uh, actually, let's kill them with the sword. All that can happen. I wanted to demo this sword, killing all the low HP husks, but they've all got 5 HP and they'll all die when I kill one of them with a the sword. There, like that. That's why these have 5 HP. So the sword can wreck them all. And here we have just two spawners of pretty much every mob in the map. Except for the base zombies. Hello. I can see the box! Box spotted. Box ahoy! Give me that gapples. Give me then my good arrows. Weakness arrows. Don't need anything else from there. Hop across. Regen, regen, regen! How are you not dead? They're dead. They're dead, Jim. Well, there you go. And... Boots are gone, your helmet's gone, your chest plate's gone. You get destroyed. Okay, you need to go away. Saved by the gamble. I just knock you off the ledge. Thank you very much. Bow be gone. Well, mob be gone. Entire mob be gone. Who needs to knock their bow out of their hands when you can just kill them? I also didn't bother, read, forgot to make these evokers not drop their totem of their undying, so we're getting a whole bunch of those. Whole load of those. A bajillion of those. Your sword's gone. Some regular old golden picks that I don't need to wait to spin up. <laughs> yes. Let me tell you, with even with the full gold armor, the vexes, the vexes, the vexes, when they were there in the playtest before I put in the command blocks to replace them with skeletons. The vexes just wrecked me. Several times. 
So yes, they're gone. That is why they are gone. They're replaced with more skeletons. You got more chances to use the cool trick shooter bow. Could also replace them with zombies and maybe have the when you kill more but other zombies nearby get withered. Even that sort of bit more of a chance to shine. Either mob would have worked. Okay, only one more lot of spawners remain. Can I move one of your swords, maybe? No, I'm just gonna kill him. I'm just gonna kill him. Smashing. Uh, am I out of torches? I'm out of torches. That's alright. I can make them all. Here you come. Find a set of spawners. Really should have turned the command block output off. And your bow is gone. And your bow is gone. And your bow is gone. Perish. I believe I load the health of the skeletons as well. I think they only have uh, 15, the ranged ones, as opposed to their normal 20. Hunted low health, apparently. Here we go! I could have put in a teleporter, I could have just put the monument at the end, but I decided to give the player an elytra here instead, so you can fly back along the entire length of the bridge at the end and see how far you've come. I think we've travelled about 500 blocks, yep. We are at 585, the spawn point is fairly close to 0, zero. 500, 600 blocks we've travelled. Uh, if you were to enchant the shadow, would you keep its special effect? Yes. It would. I'm probably going to disallow enchanting and anvils and things in the full map that uses this. Because otherwise you can make OP stuff. <laughs> Not that you can't make OP stuff anyway with your just regular old vanilla. Uh, enchanting table, even more OP stuff. But this map has no enchanting tables or anvils or anything, so it wasn't really necessary. Thank you for playing! This map was made as a joke map for April Fool's Day 2022. It's created in a single evening. Uh, to be precise, I started at about 8 o'clock and I had it uploaded and the description ready to put onto the Discord the following day and everything by before midnight, so. The entire process from coming up with the idea to making it and having it out there took four hours, but I had already made the item builder items, apart from that one potiony one I mentioned earlier. Look out for that map soon, TM. Definitely soon, TM. Special thanks to Zombieware for creating the extremely polished item builder data pack. It is brilliant. Hope that you enjoyed. I did enjoy past self. Keep on bridging on. Up. Phew. We get to fly all the way back across the length of the bridge. We see how far we have come. A little bit more impactful than putting the finish at the end, or just putting in a teleporter. At least I think so. There's no fancy fireworks or anything. <laughs> I didn't have time to set that stuff up. It's just there. 
It's just done. But yes, there we go. I am fairly proud of this map, actually, considering it was made very impromptu. <laughs> There's a uh, gag to go along with our CTM Community Discord April Fool's theme. There's the command blocks I mentioned uh, back at the beginning. The ones that replace the vexes with the skeletons. The only two command blocks in the map. Yeah. We have successfully crossed the moat. Not that there is a moat. But there is a bridge that we have crossed. The bridge also has crosses on it. Not really intentional, it's just the way the block var ended up. But yeah, as a extremely quick, jokey kind of a map, and as a tech demo of using item build things that are going to reappear in a future map when I finally finish it, uh, the map served its purpose quite well. I hope you'll give it a play, if you have not already. It is, as you see, a very short map. About half an hour to 45 minutes. And I would like feedback on the items. Are they balanced? Are they not? The description's clear. kind of thing is going to be very helpful for me making... Uh, refining more of them for a full map which uses the same kind of stuff. So yes, that is that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope you were not fooled too many times on this fine day. Have a great weekend, stay safe, and until next time, I shall see you soon.